Oh, Willie says LOL, Coach. Uh, Willie Leonard gives us a comment here. But let's talk, uh, first off, how do you feel, you know, we're going to do the team preview now, but yeah. how do you feel about being live, man, here on Periscope? It's, with you, Zeb, it, it all feels just uh, very, very normal, very comfortable. You make right. everything very, very comfortable, Zeb. Okay. You don't, like, I think there were times you always wanted to, I think you wanted to hurt me sometimes when I wrestled for you, but we're good now, right? We're good now. We're good now. We're okay. Good now. So, Coach, uh, you know, coming into this year, uh, talking, I, I love what I see at 125 on the mat for you. One way or another, I like what's going to be on the mat. One way or another, I think it should be a very, very good situation for us. Compared to, I don't want to say compared to what we've had. I think with Dell, I think that just the way you recruit 25 pounders and it seems like they all turn to 33 pounders, which we're going to be in that situation here shortly. But I think for this year, we should be pretty good one way or another, however it unfolds. Anthony Tudelo, I'm watching this guy. He is just scrappy. He's great on the mat. He's got some offense on his feet. Uh, I like that guy. I think that guy's a guy who can challenge. He's been competitive with Nathan Thomas all before. Yep. Then you got Newhouse, who beats a guy in the state finals last year who he'd lost to five times in a row in his career. That guy, he put it on Mac today. Yep. He's a 25-pounder. What, 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 what goes on there? Do you register at Newhouse? What do you do here? Well, ultimately, I think they're all 33-pounders. I think Newhouse could grow into be a 41-pounder in the future. Um, you know, I, I think the biggest thing right now is with Anthony is figuring out what weight he's going to be. I think, you know, last year we wanted to be a 25-pounder. He made it. He ended up getting a tumor in his neck that became the point where it ended his season. And he told me all this crazy stuff, a crazy tumor on his neck, a hole in his lung. I was like, oh, my goodness. He had a lot of issues that I don't know if they were wrestling-related, but as a coach, you're like, what's going on with this kid? Is it, you know, is this kid going to be a, a problem from here on out? And I think finally he ended up getting healthy right around March. He ended up starting wrestling freestyle as soon as the season with, with our club team. And he did a great, it was really the first time we saw him actually being able to cut weight, come in the room, be, do everything we asked him to do, and then go out and compete and do well at the University of Nationals, which he placed as a freshman. He's our first, fre well, besides Ian Miller and Dustin Kilgore, he's our first freshman never placed at the University of Nationals. He took sixth. Which, if you're putting, you know, for Kansas State Wrestling, you're putting your name in those two, both those guys are going to be three-time All-American. So it's too low. Not to say he's going to be three-time All-American, but he's with those guys as their freshman year. Really happy with how his season ended. Wasn't very sure of how it was going at the beginning, um, but very, very happy with how it ended. Now the question is, can he make 125? And, and does he want to make 125? Can he make 125? And how productive will he be if he, do, if he does make it? And, and can, he, can, can he stay there at that weight? And that's the part we don't know. Um, I, I think with Newhouse, you talk to Newhouse, and if you see Newhouse, Newhouse has already lost a bunch of weight. He's about eight over. He did, he's just a he's a competitive kid. You watched him in the room today. He comes in here and he wants to fight every day, and he's a he's more of a scrappy wrestler than he is a technically sound wrestler. But sometimes I'll take those scrappy wrestlers just as much as I'll take a kid that's technically sound. So it looks like whoever you put on the mat at 133, whether it's Mac, whether it's Tudelo, whether it's Newhouse, someone's going to migrate up, it sounds like. At, at, well, we'll probably redshirt. If Newhouse isn't the guy at 125, we'll redshirt him. And then we'll let him, we'll let him see what happens. Like I said, I think the big part is seeing where Tudelo will end up for this year. I don't want to waste a, a year with, uh, with Newhouse if we don't have to. Because I think at some point, if Tudelo can make 25 and be productive there, I think at that point we tell our Newhouse, this is your point to to get big and be you know and enjoy not enjoy your senior but put some muscle on get some thickness to you become a 33 141 pounder and next year we'll worry about what weight Tatulo is going to go at that point but ultimately I think they're both 133 141 pounder well Tatulo is a, a 25 33 I think Newhouse could be a 33 41 give him a, a year to, to put muscle on and he could be he's, he's, you know he's a tall lanky kid you've had a lot of a lot of luck with Mass on Perry lately. Um, I'm looking at the three Maslin Perry guys you've got. They all want to fight you. Yeah. Well, Sparkman's a nicer guy, but like Isaac Bast, I saw him grind a guy today into fodder and then just, just run the guy over in the third period. If there's any one guy that's made the most as far as steps or getting better from the time he's been here to now, which is a year and a half, it would be Isaac Bast. Last year, you know, he came here, he's changing his body, which you have to do. He wrestled 174, I believe, right? The state tournament because he couldn't. 71, yeah. 71. You know, he's a 50, 57, 65 pounder, and he he's just gotten so much better from last year until now. He's a grindy type kid. He comes in, he works extremely hard. He was here all summer. Um, he's one of those kids that you want all your guys to be like. Looking at, you know, 33, is there anything less than a MAC title that you expect out of MAC? Uh, 
I think that I think if we're worried about being a MAC title with Mac, you might be worried about the wrong thing. I think his goal is to be an All-American. I think he's around a 16 last year. Coach. He's around a 16. I think he's one of those guys that he just he, he, we need to get him to that next step, and he hasn't gotten there. And he's been around a 16 guy. For not, he's been ranked in that 15 to 12 area almost his whole career. Um, you know, you, you, you look at him, and even you look at someone like Ian or Dustin. You look at the steps they've made through their career. I think it's time to make a step. If not, he's going to be another 12 to 15 guy this year. And you know, ultimately, we've shown that we can get, we can develop kids. He's a kid that just needs to put more work in, realize how good he can be, get his weight under control. He needs to do all the little things that, that he struggles with doing at times. And that, not that we struggle with as a co as a coaching staff. We, I think we have to make him, we have to hold him more accountable than we ever have in the past. If he wants to be on the podium at the end of the year, if not, and when we're holding him accountable, and if he's just going to shy the other way, he's going to end up to be a, a an 18 to 15 guy or a 12 to 15, 18 guy like he's been in the past. And we've, I've had many conversations with Mac about this, so he knows. He realizes this is last year. He realizes what he has to do to make it to that next step. A lot of it with wrestling. The one great thing about wrestling, it's about yourself and how hard you want to work and the amount of time you want to put in and the things you want to get out of it. You lose Tyler Small, who's a four-year starter, three-time NCAA qualifier. Now, you, who steps in at 41 for you? Well, I, I think right now we have Chance Driscoll there. Um, like I said, we, we, we had some guys two years ago. If you look at the guys we had that we thought would be 141-pounders, we had uh, um, Skenesny, which we thought would be there. Um, so we've had some kids that just kind of fell off. We had a few other recruits that um, we recruited a kid last year that decided in the summertime, you know, he's a, he's a three-time champ. And, and uh, he just decided he didn't want to wrestle anymore. So he was coming here to be a 141 pounder for us, and he just decides he doesn't want to wrestle anymore. And he's not, he doesn't want to go to college, I guess, more so than wrestling. So right now it's Chance. The one good thing with Chance is you're not going to find a harder working kid on our team. You're not going to find a kid that wants to be a part of, be a starter, to, to put in the work. Um, he just, he needs to get in there and he needs to be able to grind matches and learn how to wrestle at this level. He's a redshirt sophomore and he just needs time to learn. He, he started for St. Ed's one year. He was in the semifinals of the state tournament, ended up taking a fifth. He lost in triple overtime to the eventual state champ in the semifinals in his first state tournament and then ended up taking fifth, I believe. Um, so he's a kid that is everywhere he's gone, he's just gone and worked real hard and worked his way into the lineup. He's worked his way into the lineup now. Now we need to work him, work, his, work himself into being a, a competitive kid that can that can help us win dual meet matches. And also he can learn to win so when he gets to the MAC tournament, he can learn to beat guys and hopefully like I said, I would think what a goal of his would be to get to the national tournament this year, eventually to, to, to be competitive at the national tournament to, you know, two, three years from now to being a guy who wants to place there. Looking at 49-57, I don't know how you can't expect both of those guys to be on the podium. One guy in the top and one guy in the top eight. De Palma, the guy is just a, he's a mixed bag. Last year was a mixed bag season. It was just such an up and down thing. Even the, his first year with Russell was an up and down year. I think a lot of that is mental. I think he's, he's gone out and found the resources to help him with that, and I think our athletic department has, has gave him those resources. Um, but really, if you just look at talent-wise, what he's been able, the kids he's been able to compete with, it's all about just mentally going out there and being consistent with that. And like I said, as a, as a university, as a program, we've given him all the resources he's needed. He's taken advantage of all those resources. Now hopefully he can apply those resources into making him a top, top eight guy, which is his goal. And, Skill-wise, he definitely has the skill. I think it's all right up in his head right now. One of the things, is, I think Claxton wasn't around to be All-American, correct, last year? I don't know how Claxton lost that match to Neff from Lock Haven. Yeah. I, what do you, or, or last yeah, he year, pinned last him. year, he pinned. Palma beat Neff. He's beaten Claxton twice. He's beaten the kid from Michigan who was an All-American a few times. So he's Grahalas. Grahalas. He's yeah, beaten I mean, guys that have been there, and he's beaten them pretty handily. Beaten Dave. He pinned Dave Habit. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's just a matter of him being consistent in his wrestling and, and, and at the end of the year being where he needs to be. Anything less than a national title for me and I mean if there, there's a guy who could do it. Well, I, I don't, I, I, that's, that's, it's hard to win a national title. I think we're throwing around a national title here like they're easy to do. We had a world champ that took second this year so in, in Schneider. So yeah, yeah, yeah I mean that's a great point. It, you're throwing around, you know, we got a guy that's a freshman that right now has the same credentials that Kale Sanderson has so I think Throwing out a national title is, a, a, I think, I think anything from getting in the finals and competing with that guy. Last year, I think if you look at the, if you look at uh, Illinois' guy and where, where he, the guys he wrestled, it was a three to one match with Ian with 20 seconds left and Ian tried inside, or an inside trip to a throw and got pinned. But I think it was probably his closest match he had all year. Yeah, and everybody, I think a lot of people lose focus of that because he you know, had close matches with James Green and he steamrolled everybody else. Yeah. 
but he didn't steamroll Ian. Ian steamrolled no. himself to his back and got yeah. pinned. It yeah. was like a three-two match, actually. I it think three-two match, and then he ended up getting pinned. And Ian tried to throw him because that's that's I, what Ian does. <laughs> so that's that's you know he's going for the big move. He's competitive with that guy. I think everybody knows that. I think they know that. Yeah, I think but you know that kid's also a freshman. How much better is he going to get? So it's I think getting to the finals is a is a big goal for him. Anything can happen in the national finals. I think uh, Dustin Kilgore when he wrestled um, Quentin Wright. I think. I would have bet my house that Dustin Wimmel would beat Quentin Wright in the finals. At, th at that time, just going through the season and, and looking at the semifinal match that Quentin had with uh, the pit guy, I think that, him, that Dustin would have just went through him. But a lot of things can happen in the, in the national finals. And uh, so I think getting to the national finals is, is, is our goal for Ian and Ian's goal. Um, and anything less than a national finals, unless there's a circumstance. Last year, you know, after he lost, I think that Taking a comeback and taking a third would have been anything this morning. Then he hurts his knee, and you know he has a hard time wrestling when he's injured. So it was one of those things where he ends up taking a fifth, and I was pretty happy with this finish when it all when it all when it all happened. Um, so once you get the national tournament, and if you can stay healthy and you can be competitive, I think anything less than the national finals, being in the finals would be a, a disappointment unless something happens to him. Do you think like a guy like that, you put him in Madison Square Garden Saturday night in March? Is that the only thing going to happen factor of the guy I like that? Ian, I think Ian can wrestle with anyone because there's a part of Ian that, that, that when, as soon as he walks up the mat, it's like last year after he, after he, in my opinion, I'll say, I don't know if everyone's ever, after he got screwed, he walked off and not that he didn't care because he cared, but he didn't let him eat him up where I think it probably let our, eat, our coaching staff eat, I, probably his dad ate his dad up more than that, than that. There's fans that I've talked to that are probably at the end of the day, we're more upset when it was all said and done than Ian was. He's literally, like you ask him, I don't think he literally cares. I don't want to use the word he doesn't care because you don't put in all his work and you don't do what we do not to care. But there's a part of him that can let it go and say, it's wrestling, this is my life. And and it's it's the part that I think makes people really, really good. And, uh, um, you know, the part where you can say, I don't care if I win or lose, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out and do my best. And when you walk off, you know you gave your best, does it matter if you win or lost? I don't know. He's that type of kid, though. Um, and that's a frustrating part as a coach, but it's also what makes Ian really look successful. When he, you know, once he walks up, walks up the mat, it's done and over with. And to him, it's all right. What's next for me in my either wrestling career, in my life, my my life? And he's fine with usually the results. And it's because he works real hard and he does all the things that we ask him to do. And, and you know, so it's it's a good thing. It's also a thing that, as a coach, it drives you a little crazy at times. Sixty-five, seventy-four question marks. We don't know who's going to be out there for you. What are you doing at sixty-five? What are you doing at seventy? Well, we got we have a, a returning three-year starters, two-year starter at 165 with Buckwalder. Um, I think we got some guys on our team right now that can push him for a starting position. Will that happen? I think Buckwalder is really savvy, and, and it's his first year that he's actually healthy. Um, two years ago, he, he had a, a knee problem throughout the year, and there were certain things that we couldn't couldn't do with him in practice. La he had a major knee surgery right after, right after the season was over last year. He didn't start wrestling again right until right about now this time. Like He wasn't doing anything until right about now, and last year there were points when he just, his knee bothered him. So he's been healthy for a year. It's almost, it was a little bit more, the surgery he had was more extensive than an ACL surgery, what he did. So he's now finally 100%. Um, it's probably his first year as a fifth year senior that he's ever been 100%. But at the same point, we got Isaac Bass, we have um, Jerrod Jer James that are pushing him in the room, and it's only gonna make whoever it is in, our, in that spot better. But on paper right now, you gotta go with Bulk Walter because he's a savvy wrestler, He's smart. He's 100, percent and he's been doing this for he's, he's done this for five years. So Seven, I'm the, 74. What are you doing? 74 is wide open. Um, you know that's wide open. I should have said. Yeah. 65 is not as wide open. Not as wide open. I think, like I said, at the end of the day, I think Buck Walter will be our starter. But if Dry James or Bass were to beat him out, then then that's the way we go. We're not at the point where we're gonna you know, we're gonna wrestle our best guy and and get, you know if, if it happens to be we're going with youth this year, then we're gonna go with youth that way. But I think Buck Walter's the better guy. At 74, we've got a little bit of everything in there as far as, um, you know, Gerald Spawn came on at 184 last year. Gerald Spawn started off as a 65 pounder that was cutting a lot of weight, wrestling 74. We had a bunch of injuries that all the way through there last year. He wrestled 84 for us because we had no one else at 84. He's now at his right weight class. Um, he does a lot of really good things. He's in great shape. Um, he's hard to wrestle. The big thing with him is keeping him healthy. Um, then we have another 50 year senior in. Michael Vallant that's been behind uh, uh, Marsh his whole career. So now he'll have an opportunity to see, hey, am I the best guy here? And it, like I said, it's a really good position to be in because whoever starts there, I know I'm gonna get a decent guy. I know that I'm gonna get some, 
either a fifth year guy that's been experienced or a guy like uh, Spawn who's been doing, who did it last year at 184 and now it's the right weight class. And once again, he's a, he's a tough kid to wrestle. Baxter down to 84, Canal up to 97. Yep. What do you expect out of those two guys? I think Baxter, the, he's finally at the right weight class. And I think last year we made a mistake. And, you know, what happened was, was last year Sam Wheeler was starting off for a year. We figured he'd be our 84 pounder. So we did everything we possibly could to get Baxter as big as he could. He finally gets up to about 210. Um, we're thinking he's a good size 197 pounder. He doesn't certify at 184. The season goes on. All of a sudden, we're in the middle of the season. He's down to 192 again during the season. Um, on a daily basis, he's coming our way in 192. So he's an 84 pounder. So this year, he's going to be at the right weight class. He's known it all year. Um, strength wise, it'll be the kids he can handle. And like you said, I think he's always a decent 197 pounder. How does that translate into being a 184 pounder is a big question for him. But I think that we're not going to be any worse than we were last year. I think we'll be better off than we were last year. And I think if you look at weight classes, you always try to improve your weight classes. And I don't see a weight class that we're not going to improve in this year. Maybe 141 will take our, our, our bumps. Um, but I think at the end of the day, I think small either, whatever place he took, I think, you know, I think the chance could place in the MAC tournament. So I don't know if we'll be that much lower. Um, so at 184, I think we'll be better off than we were last year, and hopefully Cole can get to the national tournament as a fifth-year senior, and, and he brings a lot of experience. He's a smart kid, a great kid to have on the team as far as personality-wise, and he'll be at the right weight class. So we're cutting weight for the first time in his career, which is good also. 97 Canal, I think the well, guy's I think the people stuck. are kind of just putting in Canal, but we also have a guy named Suglio, which is a pretty good kid. He actually got the best of Canal today. Yeah, I think in the room they go back and forth. I think some of the things that Canal's done in open tournaments as a freshman makes your eyes big and say, wow, this could be the... The, the real deal. One thing is Canel's not a, not, he's not a, a hard working kid, but he isn't a room wrestler. He wrestles a lot better in in front of people out in the match, almost like like um, Ian does. He just, he wants to, he's a, not that he's a performer, but he, he has a better sense of, you get more, you get to see exactly what he's worth out in the match, where a lot of kids, their best wrestling is in rooms, their best wrestling is in a wrestling room. I don't think his is, I think Canel's the complete opposite of that. We're going to wrestle them off next week. We're going to kind of get an idea who's better. Not that the wrestle-offs are going to be our final key. We'll then go to the, the um, clearing. We'll send both those guys. We'll see who does better. And we'll start making some decisions after the uh, clearing tournament to see who our starter is for that first Eastern Michigan duels. National qualifier, Mimo, he's out through December, he told me. Yeah, right around December he'll be back. Okay. Who you got instead? We got a kid named Devin Nye. Um, Sam Breeze ended up leaving our team. He, did, he told us the week before school started that he was going to play football at, uh, actually about two weeks before, he was going to go play football at Edinburgh University, Division II school, and that uh, he didn't want to wrestle anymore. He was a big time recruit for us. He was a three time place winner, I think a two time champ. Champ, yeah, two time PA, PA champ. Um, so we, we, we thought we had someone, and we're now left with a kid named Devin Nye who wrestled 220. He's been wrestling four years. He's a big, tall, lanky kid. So he's like 17 shoe? 17 shoe. He, he, he reminds me of a small Jermail. Um, he's a worker, too, man. He's a worker. Um, like I said, he reminds me of a small, uh, not, I wouldn't even say a small Jermail, a skinny Jermail. He's as long as his width is as long as Jermail, <laughs> but he's as tall as Jermail was. He's a really, really decent athlete. He just hasn't wrestled that long. And uh, four years wrestling. I, it, four years he's counting. He's like a two-time state placer. And he wrestled, he wrestled for three years in high school, one year in college. He's a four-year wrestler. This is literally his fifth, fifth year, year of wrestling. wrestling. But at heavyweight, man, it's one of those weight classes that you learn one or two really good things. You learn to stay in position, you learn to defend yourself can ride for a little bit, which he's really, really good on top for a heavyweight. And he could be pretty, you know, he ended up placing twice in the state tournament at upper weights after his third and fourth year of wrestling. Like I said, it reminds me a lot of Jermail. The question is, how can we develop? Him? Big upside. Big upside to him. Um, so we'll start off with them and we'll go from there and we'll see how him and Mimo do when, when Mimo gets back. Okay. You literally have my SD card down to two minutes here. I'm down to under 10% battery. I'd ask you if you got anything else for me, but I don't have any. I don't have any more battery or, or space for you. That's all right. We talked about a lot. We're, see, we're at five percent on the phone. Okay, coach. Thanks for the time. I appreciate it. Thank you.